I mean, it all just comes down to how much time you're willing to put in to the craft and into what what you love to do. To, to speak up for the things of God and Christianity. But I feel like a lot of people really don't zero in on that. Uh, reports came out that you used a banned substance. I tell you right now, I like these questions. I like the tough questions. Like, As everyone who followed the case, um, It's a real honor to really have you on here to meet the legend himself. Uh, thank you. You're amazing, man. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> so um, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself, your upbringing, and what got you into the martial arts? Uh, first of all, hello, everyone. My name is Tung Lee. Um, I've been blessed that God Almighty has uh, guided me down the path and um you know, um, throughout the years, I got to be a wrestler to a martial artist, got to fight from point fighting all the way to Taekwondo to the full contact to even uh, bare knuckle karate and wow. in Shidokan and then, then Sanda and then, then um, you know, in Strike Force, then IKF, then uh, fought in, um, then Strike Force MMA, then got to fight in UFC. So I've been on many platforms. And I uh, just got to say, uh, it, it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for God. You you were very unique because, um, and this is not a knock on a lot of the traditional martial artists from the past, but uh, I hate to say it, a lot of them didn't have the grappling. You know, they didn't have that down packed, but you were one of the first few guys to come around that. You were a legitimate, you know, a tradition traditionalist, but you could you could you could roll around on the ground, you could do it all. And we hadn't seen that. So that was very impressive in itself. Yeah, I mean, it all just comes down to how much time you're willing to put in to the craft and into what what you love to do. And so I, I wanted to be a complete uh, martial artist. And so I and being in um, you know, fighting in MMA and not jumping from like a small league into right. like a big league. I, I went from fighting for strike force to fighting on the biggest stage, which is at the time strike force for me. But, um, you know, strike force, I, I believe at that time, look how many champions and look at how many main events that UFC used from strike force, you know? So yeah, um, <clears throat> just, uh, it's, it's been a blessing. And I, I, I got to witness, um, that, that season when you were fighting in the UFC, it was amazing, man. I remember when you took out uh, what's his name? I think you hit him with a with a. Uh, Rich Franklin. Yeah. Rich oh, yeah, uh, Franklin. Yeah. That punch came out of hell, man. That, <laughs> and respect to Rich, he's a great fighter, great martial artist. But that was oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you know, by that time, like like everything was like starting to fall apart on my body. You know, it's like. Right. Uh, um, I, I had a foot injury, you know, my, my, my first fight, I had a crack rib against Vandalay, then against, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, Patrick Coutte after the fight, you know, my foot was messed up. And then, uh, right. um, then, uh, you know, of course you're fighting for UFC and if they tell you to fight, you're going to fight. You got to fight. You, know? you, gotta fight. Well, you don't have to fight, but you know, I need you don't to want fight. To. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, 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 um, you know, then finally for the longest time I was waiting and waiting and I, I just wanted to fight, you know, like, you know, like consistently, but then they sent me to China and doing all the, you know, China, like tough China and then, right, right. then promoting the TV series, then promoting a fight. It was just uh, nonstop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I want to, I want to take the time to do this because I feel like, um, obviously we know you're a Christian. Um, and you, 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 you go, you go far and beyond to to speak up for the things of God and Christianity. But I feel like a lot of people really don't zero in on that, and I would like to zero in on that now. Um, when did you first give your life to Christ, and uh, what was that process like walking that out? Well, I started. My grandfather, uh, who was the biggest um, component when I was a. Uh, when I was younger, making sure that his whole family knew about God and Jesus. But yeah. like when I was younger, like Vietnamese, when when you say Chua means God, but then you say Chua, which is God, but then you say Yesu, which is Jesus Christ. I didn't understand. I thought it was just one God. Right. So until um, <clears throat> I met my wife, uh, Sunshine, and uh, she she 
really, really took the time and broke it down for me about Jesus Christ. And then, then, then when I started my relationship with Jesus Christ, she, she and I know really like became one because right. like, that's what God really wants you to be is become one with him. And, you know, of course, Jesus, a lot of people don't realize that God is seven spirits. So right. you know, Jesus is one of those spirits because when Jesus says, when you see me, you see the father, when you see the father, you see me. So, you know, right. it's just from that point on, you know, uh, my wife and I, we, we do everything God first. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's been it's, it, like this book the Bible is unraveling and everyone who's living or who's, you know, was part of life in the past and passed away, they're all part of the Bible. And right. they don't realize that, you know, what, what truly God wants is for your name to be written in the book. So, because there's part two and part two, there's something, uh, you know, called eternity written in it. And a right. lot of people don't realize that. So right. they, 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 they live, to be in this world when you should live to get out of this world. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. wow. What was it like when you heard God speak to you for the first time? Personally, you know, you know, it was like, at first you, you really don't understand the magnitude because at that time you're just still like, just learning and, and trusting and, knowing that you're walking with him. But when he really talked to me, it took a moment then when it really sunk in because my wife told me like, you know, um, Jesus uh, said the end is near. And then so I was like, whoa, we better start, you know, letting everyone know because right away I already, I already had like, you know, some like a, like a relationship, but it wasn't like a strong one. But then my right. wife and I, we teamed up and we started, you know, spreading the gospel with spiritual battles. Her mom, uh, you know, is, a, you know, like full-time exorcist, you know, an exorcist. Right. Right. And of course, uh, you know, we go around on, um, you know, no charge. We go to people to help them out in their spiritual battles and, you know, whatever they're dealing with against the devil. And uh, we have over a hundred and something cases now as a family. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been quite the journey to see, you know, the, the, the evilness that's out there. And now seeing the Bible unravel right in front of our face while everyone still has it really, you know, pretty good because they haven't seen what um, Israel is going through right now in right. this country. And as you know, our border has been compromised and, you know, it's just, it, it's, you know, Jesus Christ right. is coming soon. You know, what, what right. more, what more can people who don't, um, you know, follow, can you tell them, hey, Jesus right. Christ is coming. And when time runs out, eternity starts. So you're either right. written in the book, or if you're not written in the book, then there's only up or there's only down. Right. So, yeah. Right. Well, let me, let me ask you this. So obviously, you know, and we know what comes with preaching the gospel. You know, oh, yeah. we have an eternal reward from God. And there are many blessings that come from God because of obedience. But we also know that there are people who are detractors who stand against God and stand against the gospel. Uh, what has been, so what what have you and your wife had to endure because you, just, you two decided, you and your sons, and all of you guys decided to preach the gospel? Um, you know, like really it's a lot of like name calling and a lot of things that are defiling them. Right. And so, you know, at first, you know, I used to get heated. I'm like, you know, argue back with them then. But then my wife was like, hey, be like Jesus. What did Jesus come to do here? We have to follow in his footsteps. Right. So, you know, I, I say in the last six months, I've really come to the point where I, I know that they've been deceived. And at right. one point I, I've been deceived. So if someone like myself or my wife comes along and could guide someone like me at one point to right. understand and to see. So instead of being upset, I, I more have a, a compassionate heart for them because eternity is a long time. So, right. I mean, it's forever. And this life is really short. So we, um, we, we, we try to be, as gentle as possible, even though they're F this and they're swearing and we right. and we let them know 
we will repent for their sins because it's on our page and we don't want those sins to roll around when they're like waiting for their turn to be, you know, right. judge. So, you know, um, so we, we tell them and we try to um, maneuver in the word of God. So maybe God will, you know, honor them by giving them the spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to hear and to right. see so they can get back to the, get back to the father because truly the father wants every single person, you know, to make it, but it's, his love is so powerful that he gives us free will to make right. our own choices. And it's not like he just threw us out there. It's it's basically he gave us the Bible, which is 66 books, right? right. And what is the number of man? Number of man is six. What is the number of women? Number of women is six. What, how many books is in the Bible? There's 66 books in the Bible. 39 in the Old Testament, that's God's word. And 39, what did Jesus do for us? Jesus took 39 stripes for us. And in the New Testament, there's 27. What is two? Where did we come from? Number of man, number of women, and 66, that's Adam and Eve. We came right. from Adam and Eve. They're the seeds. And a lot of people don't realize, my wife and I, we study everyone's relationship from Adam and Eve all the way to King David, King Solomon, and all the relationships. And we realize that the best relationship that any of them had was because of Adam and Eve, because Adam, you know, and Eve were fan, like tricked out of heaven by right. the sin, by the devil, and the devil is the great deceiver. And look right. what he's doing to everyone now. So that's so we realize, wow, look at that. We're we we are part of God's son because a lot of people say, oh, Jesus Christ is God's son. Yes, Jesus Christ is God's son. He's part of the seventh spirit. But when God created man and woman. Who did he create? Adam and Eve. So if you go through the Bible, um, I can send you the link later. But basically, I'll just start because it's like three minutes long, like long of right. all the, like all the names, right? But let's go to Seth, the son of Adam. Adam, right. the son of God. So we all, we are, we, us, all of us, you, me, my wife, everyone we know, everyone around, we are the seed of the son of God. Right. So, you know, it's just the corruption and the evilness of the devil. When he had a chance to make things right, he didn't. He chose right. the other path and then he chose, you know, the dark, the, the dark. And now he, he had his chance, but right. the, there, there's a lot of other angels. I truly believe that God is giving them a chance to repent because if you read the book of Enoch, you'll understand because it's, it's really deep. God is really deep. And a lot of people don't see that. They more see like science or they see someone who's intelligent in this world. But man, you got to realize God, God created every single thing, every right. single thought, except the evil ones. Right. That's the devil. That's that, that was the devil. So right. you know, God is amazing beyond words can even, you know, it's right. you know, well, yeah. Let me, let me, let me ask you this. So, um, you, cause I feel like when you were in the UFC, I was a kid, I'm 30 years old now, you know, but obviously I'm not saying you're old, you're still a, <laughs> okay, no worries. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I, um, I remember watching you and you didn't get the credit that you deserved. Um, you know, I thought you were one of the top fighters, uh, uh, and you were unstoppable. What would you say was the reason you're not talked about today as much as far as the UFC is concerned? Well, you know, the UFC, I think there's a bigger picture God had me uh, be part of. Who am I fighting for? I'm fighting for 1,215 fighters, along with all the other fighters that will um, take part after the 2017 cutoff. Right. Um, and so I'm fighting for 1,200 and 15 fighters or 14 fighters right. and that's more to me because you know everything that i do i give all the glory to the father but if when the father calls upon me to do something i have to trust and i didn't know to trust at that time he just led me that way and i followed and i went through with it and because of my name that came onto that list and then because uh, rampage 
uh, was part of it, and then he jumped out of it because he still wanted to fight. I right. I came in and I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to stand up for all the fighters, right. and um, whatever happens will happen. But you know, I knew with God um, before us, nothing can stand against us. So look what right. happened. Look look where we're at now. We right. we we got the judge saying that he certified the class action against the UFC. So the next step is like, you know, they, they're going to contest whatever the judge said, but we're going to trial, and that's early next year. That's because, I tell you, the case was dead in the water for like three years, three and a half years. And what is that in the Bible? That's a season. But right. with our faith, my wife and I, we did a seven-day prayer because everything was dead. I called up my lawyer, and I'm like, hey, what's going on? Uh, are we moving? He's like, oh, nothing. There's nothing. It's dead in the water right now. So I said, and I told him, I said, watch, I'm going to pray. My wife and I, we're going to pray for seven days. We're going to take an a, a old page out of the Genesis to pray right. for seven days. We prayed for seven days. Mm -hmm. Within two or three months, he called me and he says, hey, uh, we're, 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 we're going to, we're, we're going to go and the judge is going to give us our certification. We went there. Not only did he give us our certification, I mean, he moved it quick. We're expecting another two years. He moved it early next year. So just wow. that alone showed us that, wow, with God before you, who can stand against you? Stand no against one. You. Right. Yeah. So I, I want to I wanna go somewhere. Um, you have the freedom, obviously, to decline if you don't want to talk about it. But I've always wanted to bring it up um, because when it happened, I believe that you were innocent. Uh, reports came out that you used a banned substance. And I remember when the news came out, everybody jumped on a bandwagon. They were saying, Kanji cheater, this and that, the whole deal. And it didn't help at that time where a lot of fighters were getting caught for cheating. But I've always said that um, the, if, if someone didn't do something wrong, they will ma maintain their innocence till the end. And you've done that. And I believe that you didn't cheat and I believe that you didn't take a banned substance but I felt like how they did you at the time was real dirty because they just threw you to the wolves um I also want to say that um I don't believe in uh I don't believe in clout chasing you know um I, when I started this page and Rampage Productions I started it with the Lord I started it with honor and integrity and I intend to continue to do it with honor and integrity. So I just wanted to bring that up and have you hey, speak up. I tell you right now, I like these questions. I like the tough questions. Right. As everyone who followed the case um, and didn't point fingers, they got to see Dr. Caitlin from, um, I believe he was from Australia or New Zealand. I think it was Australia, but he was head of the Olympic PEDS, you know, whatever right. it is. But see, he had a 10-year research on HGH. So here's the thing. If I'm going to take something, I'm going to take whatever the other athletes are taking. Why would I be taking HGH? I was, I mean, you know, I mean, to, you know, keep my skin, like, right. glowing or something. I mean, <laughs> he, he jumped in and he says, not because he wanted to defend me. He was defending his 10-year research. Right. So when he jumped in on Twitter... Um, UFC on right away. First, they like hit me with a nine month uh, uh, suspension. Then, uh, right. then um, not, not Dana, but uh, you know, one of the Fatita brothers said, "Oh right. well, that he should be harder." So we give him a year. Well, hey, you know what? Soon after that, God said, "No, you're not going to do that." And um, Dr. Caitlin jumped on Twitter, and they had a. Um, take it back they never apologize so it's okay you know yeah you know, what, what they don't have to uh, apologize now because my, my wife's always bringing it up because i i get all heated about like when someone does something bad she's on what did god say revenge is mine says the lord so right. what they do is going to come back on them tenfold and right. you know thinking about it wow eternity is forever so what did Jesus teach? I pray for all my enemies. I pray for all the people who've done me wrong because eternity is forever. And, you know, if you want to truly walk like 
Jesus who was teaching, who came down to teach us and and saved our um, souls from like, you know, burning is because he saved us from not just sin, but he saved us from the original sin. And that's how we know we belong to God because we, we, we come from Adam and Eve. So, you know, there, there it is. I didn't take any substance. Um, and I also did a test right after, because, you know, as soon as my manager says, Hey, they, they got you on HGH. I'm like, Hey, my face is bleeding. If, if you, you know, you know, if you do a little research, if you sit in the sauna for 30 minutes, your HGH level goes up 180 times. Right. So look at my face. I was in a full on, you know, fight with, you know, uh, Michael Bisbing, who was ranked at that time. And, right. and you know, um, four rounds into it, I mean, I was pretty beat up. I mean, my face, because, you know, there's a, it wasn't a broken or, orbital, whatever, but it's a broken, what the bone that held up my eyeball. Right. And that happened early in the second round. But I said, you know what? Um, I know something's wrong because when I got hit, uh, it was so painful. I wanted to throw up and have, you know, right. diarrhea at the same time. That's how I right. felt. But right. I said, you know what? I, you know, I, I truly believe I could have, you know, you know, knock him out by catch him. And I fought until I, I lost. So, right. you know, it is what it is. And I don't, I don't mind because everything in this world is going to be for, it's going to be forgotten about it's how you walk in Christ is going to be remembered in heaven with all the angels, with the father. And that's where I want to get is I don't care about the hall of fame. I don't care about UFC, you know, all those guys. I don't care. I care about being in the father's hall of fame. And that's why I'm all in right now. I'm, I'm all in with my wife, with our family. And we, we like, we jump for joy when we, we just like all the angels in heaven, when one soul is saved, they're, they're all cheering when we send someone to Jesus so Jesus can save them. We're, we're jumping for joy. So we are one from the heavenly gates all the way down to this worldly. If you believe in God, then you're one with everyone. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. I love to hear that. Well, soon after, you know, after that fight, uh, you know, and a little bit down the road, some good things started happening. We started to see you in more and more movies. And, uh, you know, we got some hits and we're still getting some some hits. What was it like when you got your first movie role where you were the lead? Which I believe I'll tell you Bl Blizzany uh, Boy, I think, was, was the first lead. Oh, first. yeah. Well, that one was that one threw me off a little bit. Um, yeah. I was uh, the, the head coach of the U.S. national team. And the fight was in um, uh, Macau, China, mm -hmm. and um, um, and I ended up uh, no that that was the I was assistant coach that, but then the the following I was a uh, like 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 the head coach, and then I got a call saying that they need me as a fighter in a movie, right. and it had Eric Roberts, Gary Busey, you know, right. um, David Carradine. I was like, oh, David Carradine, yeah, definitely. <laughs> How much, you know, how much, because I didn't have an agent or a manager and, right. and they said 20,000 for one, you know, for the biggest fight scene in the movie. I said, all right, right. I'm, I'm there. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I made sure I stayed for the award ceremonies because I, I, I had um, um, two um, silver medalists that, that year. So um, I stayed for their award ceremonies and I flew like crazy hours just to jump flight to flight to get to Toronto from uh, Hanoi, Vietnam. And then, um, so I, um, I came back and then when I got on set, I signed a, like just one a paper that I'm the biggest fight and all this. And I, I didn't have an agent, so I, I didn't know. So when I signed the paper and then they're like, oh, you're going to get into makeup. I'm like, well, I just got off the plane. We're going to work right now. Okay. <laughs> so after makeup, I came out and, and, and the, the producer at the time, um, uh, this gentleman named Eric, he's all, Hey, um, everyone this is uh meet our new star i'm like new star what, what are you talking about new star and that's when i found out that um mark de walked off the set because it wasn't sag it was the movie wasn't sag so they they brought me out and i ended up uh you know um getting experience and from from there you know i figure you know continue to fight and um you know whatever you know yeah. things pop up and try it out and you know then one movie after another one movie after another one fight after another one fight after another 
and then uh, you know, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Wow. Yeah. What was it like working on Blizzardy Boy? The good and the bad. Um, you know, it was my first time, and you know, I came in. I was like, um, like you know, I had a couple acting lessons already because I had some right. other opportunities that I completely like dropped the ball on because right. I didn't know how to audition. But then by the time I came in, I already knew how to read dialogue, right? And I was like, hey, uh, David, uh, uh, they put me and you like first scene the next day. I, I really never, this is my first time. He's all, oh, it's your first time? And he's all, sit down right here. And he and then um, and then he's all, go ahead, read your lines. And I'm like, don't you need the script? He's all, I'm just going to answer you. Mm. And then he, I start reading. He's all, man, why are you so stiff? You want a, you want a little drink? To take the right. edge off, I'm all, no, this sir. Is I David, I, this is David Carradine. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm, I'm, no, sir. You know, I um, uh, <laughs> I don't drink. You know, I'm, I'm fighting. He's all, oh, you're a fighter, you're a boxer. I said, no, I do MMA. He's all, oh, okay, yeah. Well, okay, so don't make me look bad. So you, you, let's <laughs> go through your lines. I was like, so I started going through the lines. He's all, come on, put some emotion into it. So he actually started coaching me. And then, yeah, yeah. And that's all I you know, the next day I did pretty good. And he's all, see, that was in that that was in Hardem. Oh, thank you for your help, right? And then uh, then Carrie Tagawa, same thing. Hey, it's your first Tagawa. time. David told me uh, <laughs> it's your first time uh, acting. Run your lines. I'm like, oh, okay. He's all, why are you so stiff? So I like had acting lessons <laughs> on the on the days that relaxed, you know. And so it, that's how kind of like it was like a like on the job training. And even though mm -hmm. because the it's director prepared. and the producer got into a right. fight and. And then the uh, director ended up releasing the movie a little bit on YouTube when it wasn't even edited. And right. so, um, I did a little work for it to see if it was going to get rebooted again. But, um, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. But I'm not really worried about the Hollywood scene anymore because right. the only way you get to the top, not to be mean, but, you know, right. um, it's the truth. If you got to sign your soul to the devil and then you'll be right up there with all them guys. Right, you know, right. so um, that that's that wasn't gonna happen with me, and um, right. and um, so. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you this: like, you know, um, I believe in my heart of hearts, you have the grace from God to still do Hollywood and do it on His terms. You know, um, for a long time, the enemy has been corrupting a lot of things, and the power, <laughs> the wrong kinds of people have had power. But I truly yeah, believe yeah. that God is placing power in the right hands. And the time, there's no better time than now uh, uh, to see great content coming out, content that will bless people's souls, content that have a deep message, and content that glorifies God. And um, you have that grace over you. You know, you train your sons, you're doing the fighting, you're an advocate for Christ. And I mean, there's just no better time than now. You are completely right, but if you don't mind, I'm going to tell you something that God has already told me, right? Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing about this, God just told me this yesterday. This is his time. And if you truly, like, you read through the Bible a few times and you haven't gotten it, we are in the last minute because the Israel war, which right. is going to become World War Three, as you see everything coming and and when remember when God in the Bible says when Jerusalem is completely surrounded, what's going to happen? The Father's going to come down Himself and fight. So everyone, like right now, that's why God said, "Hey, you know, it's no one's time except My time." Right. I was like, "Whoa!" It, when it hit you, because when He speaks to you, you have it like the whole sentence, and you it's like you're looking at the whole sentence, and right. it's there, and you can repeat it backwards and forward, and it's His time. And right. like at the time that for for grace is over now. He he's right. at right. the door. If you don't like repent and you don't go back to him when he comes through the gate, it's there. How it's right. I mean, I'm not trying to scare anyone. No, I'm, I'm not here. You. I'm, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with you. I'm right. letting everyone know right, right. now uh, the end is near. And when time runs out, and he gave me this on the clock because if you take here's 12 to 1 is 13. 11 to 2 is 13, 10 to 3 is 13. That happened six times, but six on one side and six on the other side. Number of men is six, number of women is six. How many books are in, in, in the Bible? 66. And he says, who's coming? 
13. Why 13 so bad? But so 13 right. happened six times, 13 happened six, that's six and six. Who's who are they coming for? They're coming back for the first man, first woman, because if you're following the um, the sacred text, the book of Enoch, God told Adam and Eve, the I will come back for you at the great five and five. We don't know what the great five and five yet. Right. But as you see, here's the thing. Here's the sign that we saw. How many missiles were fired into Israel the first day? And remember, October 7th is a holy, the most holy day, not just for people in Israel. This is what God wanted everyone to celebrate. What's happening in October? Halloween. Um, Oktoberfest, Colum uh, Columbus Day, so many things happening in October. Why did they wage war on October 7th, which is God's most holy day? Because this is a holy war. And that's what I've been trying to tell everyone. It's your timeline, everyone, to repent and to get things right, but don't have to live in fear. Continue to live your life, but make changes so God can notice your change because whatever you're doing now, you're still, if you go to church for one hour, then you're doing everything else in the other 23 hours. Right. Then, then the rest of the week, whether you have a relationship with him or not, he's going to be the one standing in front of you, judging right. you. So it'd be really good if everyone had a really good relationship, because as soon as you're off your knees, you, you want the hug, not right. where he says, depart from me. Right. And what's he say about that to the he says, I'd rather them be hot or cold, but if they're lukewarm, what's going to happen? They will, he will spill you out of his mouth. So right. I'm just saying, we, I know there's many mansions, but you right. might as well go all in so you can make it in and, and, you know, and so you don't have to look back. This is the time. The time is now. The time is now to go all in. So, okay. So, so when you were working on Lizzie Boy and all the other films you've done, uh, what was it like working with Ergen? I think that's how you pronounce his name. Ergen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lagashev. And um, did you get a chance to witness to him? Um, you know, working with Ergen was, um, you know, he was really good to me. The director was really good to me. I've never had any problems with um, the cast and, uh, I mean, uh, the crew. I just had a few problems with, you know, um, some cast members on some, some, uh, some sets, but you know, um, uh, it's like, yeah. Like what, if you, if you don't, <laughs> I don't want to mention any names, okay. but okay. Right. someone right. who's Asian, who's kind of ripped. Uh, I don't right. want to say the name of the movie cause then you'll know who it is, but <laughs> you know, right. it, it just, you know, there's some people in there that are not good people and right. And, um, too, yeah. you know, the, and, and, and the way they talk to people, it's like, whoa, you know, um, yeah. did, I, th I don't think your mom or dad would be really proud of you wow. if you, they saw you like that, you know, so, yeah, yeah. but it, you know, it's, it comes with the industry, like comes there's all that, <laughs> but um, here's the thing, all the top stars, I mean, <laughs> I hope they repent and I hope they come <laughs> back to the father soon because I mean, come on. It, it, uh, I mean, you know, I, I was like, finally, like an Asian, you know, uh, you know, some Asians recently made it right. Then all of a sudden, right. you know, it's like, God is like, like they're, they're, God starts showing me things. Like when you have a relationship with God, he's like, don't worry. That's not yeah. the industry you want to be in. The next thing I see, they, they do the, the eye thing, you know, the one right. eye. Let to get funny. Like, oh, no, why? No, not. Why did you do that? You know? Right. And right. so it's, um, right. it, it's just, it's just like that's how good the, the devil is. He's a great deceiver, and right. it's a very uh, it's it's um it's hard to see because you know eternity is forever. It's like right. I wanna I, I have some really close friends, and I hit them up. I send them all these scriptures. They don't even read. Some of them even unfollow me. You know. So, <laughs> you know. Um, how did Dragon Eyes come about? And how did you land that part? And did it, and did you have to audition? Dragon. I didn't have to audition for Dragon Eyes. Uh, again, God, God put me in into the industry, gave me a little taste of it, and then, um, you know, um, I, I, uh, I was blessed to to um, to get 
where I did. And I'll just tell you right now, when I decided to walk, take that walk in faith, my uh, my manager at the time and my agent was hitting me up for um, Robert Downey Jr.'s new HBO show. And they, I mean, they couldn't find, at first my agent um, told me that because I, I was too young looking for the part, they're looking for a general. Right. And I was like, okay, no big deal, right? And then so right. they came back to me and they said, hey, send in your, send in your thing. And I was like, uh, you know, okay, I, I'm really busy right now. This one, I start really getting in, going on cases and I, I start getting addicted to these cases, helping people, feeling the Holy Ghost throw within me, you know? Right, and, right. Um, and then uh, I was like, I didn't turn in my audition and I was like, oh, I completely forgot. I would, that's the first time it ever happened. I said, father, is that, you know, maybe the father's guiding me. So I, I didn't pay attention. I said, oh, you know, my agent be mad, but whatever. All of a sudden my manager called me and said, hey, um, I know the um, the casting, you know, agent and uh, they, they, they were looking through your profile and they said, all you have to do is send in something that you speak Vietnamese and you can deliver a dialogue. I right. said, um, I, I don't think I'm going to be doing this. And he's like, what are you talking about? You don't understand. It's like the part is like they don't, they haven't found anyone. If your name is going to be second or third to Robert Downey Jr. I said, let me sit on it. Right. So I, I sat on it a few days and my agent sent me, hey, they, they want you to audition, you know, send in your audition. I, I said, I thought it was over. And they said, hey, whatever it is, maybe they're making an exception. We don't know, but. They haven't found the person, send it in. And I sat on it for another day and I prayed about it. And I said, you know, so I choose you, Father. I just, it just came to me, says, hey, make your choice. And I said, I choose you. Yeah. And and literally, I said, you know what? I'm going to soak this in for a bit because, you know, I, I asked my manager, what's the pay? What's this? And I was like, wow, potentially that it could be this or it potentially could be this. I mean, they want to lock me in for the next two and a half years, right? Wow. And that would have been the, the best time right now with all those cases, with all those people that right. I've been going after. And I said, you know what, Father, I choose you, but I'm going to soak in this. And <laughs> I tell you, you know what, I, after everything that I've done, he's got me to a point, he's all, okay, you know, you want to soak in that? And it just gets, gets, kept playing back in my mind, kept playing back in my mind. Then we started learning about like true telling people how to repent, how to, you know, come to God. And I was like, hey. I need to live by the word too. Father, I repent for trying to soak in that glory at that moment. I repent for it. And mm -hmm. I, I knew. And just from that point on, the relationship with the father was like next level. Next and level. like, I'm telling you in Vegas, it doesn't rain that much here. But like I asked for rain. I've seen it come the next day. I've seen it come a week later. But like we always have the most beautiful sunsets and the first couple months i came here i was like oh this is a bad area no sun because i came from um, san jose uh, you know and uh, since i've been working here in vegas and just doing like kind of like our headquarter from vegas to orange county i've been back and forth a lot but you know um lately like coming here i was like wow father let's let's give let's get some beautiful sunsets and i tell you at my old house in san jose we have the most amazing sunsets. I've seen UFOs in that area. I have pictures of it. I have, I've seen the clouds turn into a, like a scary demon face and my right. son and I cast it out of the, out of the sky. I mean, there's like so many things that has happened and we're truly like walking in faith and, and right. we're like, we understand what each disciple did because we study their relationship with God right. and how, you know, like what Peter would say, what, you know, Moses would say, and we're like, oh, we're all in. Whatever you say, it goes, you know. And I'm telling you, it's it's the most amazing relationship that anyone can ever have. And you just got to trust because look at all the things that could happen, but I don't care because right. that's that's a, that's that more important around. than everything. Yeah well, yeah. well, okay. So I don't want to, I don't want it to seem like I'm deviating because like I did say earlier. No worries. Um, I, 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 I do. I, I reason i obviously one of the reasons i wanted to bring you on is because you're a big star in my eyes um and how i spoke when you offer the gospel i wanted to kind of zero in on that because no one has really ever went into that part because they feel like it wouldn't be good you know something interesting to, for people to watch or you know views etc cetera, etc cetera. but um 
what was it like working with Van Dam? What was that I mean, experience? He was really cool with me. I mean, you know, um, um, there, there's one scene that, you know, it was like his last day of shooting. And, mm. and then um, there's a scene where he had to beat me up. So we we're like flow sparring. Right. Like he was just getting some good licks in. And, <laughs> and then, then, then it showed time that I started getting better and getting mm. better, then getting better. You know, then, uh, then, then, then we, we shot a scene and uh, Von Dom tried to throw a hook kick. And I, and I, I felt his leg wrap around and hit my head. I was like, oh, this guy's really trying to hit me hard, you know? So I started <laughs> picking up the pace a little bit. And next thing you know, he's like, ah, okay, stunt double. I need a breather, you know? So it was, uh, it was, it was fun. I got a chance to, you know, move around with him and, uh, you know, and it was fun. That's cool, man. That's awesome, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. And what about um John Hines? What was it like working with him? Uh, John Hines is really, really great to work with. He was really like open-minded. Hey, let's try this. Let's do this. And he was like, let's go. Let's crash him through the window. You know, I was like, all right, <laughs> let's go. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you worked on Savage Dog, I believe it was. With yeah, Jesse, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who I'm going to have on here very soon. Um, What was it like working with those guys? I love working with Jesse Johnson. I, I I did the movie one because I wanted to work with Jesse Johnson. Two, I want to work with Scott Atkins. You know, and um, you know, I, I told Jesse, hey, you know, um, you know, at that time, I I was still, you know, in yeah. you know, all, you know, and I said, hey, we got to make the fight where you know, yeah, you know, and realistically, because I, I already got it, I got so much heat when when Channing Tatum, you know, beat me in yeah. in fighting, right? <laughs> so I said, hey, you know, really, um, let's you know, um, let's make it like, like hardcore, hard hitting. And, um, right. uh, you know, let, let's see. And then like, we didn't expect me and me and Scott Atkins, we were shooting another scene and, and then Jesse says, Hey, this is our last day here. Um, you guys have a few, uh, a few hours to rehearse your fight scene. We're like, what fight scene? What, what are you talking about? This is like a different, you know, this <laughs> is a different day. I mean, he's on, no, this is our last day in this location we didn't get another day. We said, oh, okay. So we started going to our fight scene and it turned out great. And we shot that and um, we were out of there. Wow. wow. Literally, like we had a couple hours to rehearse it and we shot it that same day. Wow. That's yeah. awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, You also did uh, Man with the Iron Fist, which I believe uh, was an awesome film. It doesn't get the credit it deserves because Rizzo was a first time director. Um, what was it like working with all those big stars on that movie? You know, I, I, I got to say, you know, um, I was supposed to have a fight with um, Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, they changed it to Lucy Liu, and, um, you know, I, I was uh, I was excited to fight Russell Crowe, but then, you know, I think, uh, like, the fight scene with um, Lucy Liu turned out, you know, fun and, you know, something different, something I got to, you right. know, uh, do differently and be in like a totally, you know, chop sake, kung fu, <laughs> you know, tiger <laughs> move, ah, you know, so it was cool. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's I kind of awesome. like based my character after, I'm sure you remember the Five Deadly Venoms. Did you watch that? Yeah, I'm Toad? familiar with that, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's do like, because yeah. Riz is all, I want you to be like a cross between, um, uh, between like to uh, uh, the Toad and, uh, you know, something else, you know, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you've, you've, uh, and we're not, again, you know, it's all love and respect for everyone. Uh, you've said you've had some words in the past about Steven Seagal. I agree with you. Um, so I want to ask you, what are your thoughts about Seagal, the good and the bad? You know <laughs> what? Um, I'll tell you right now, um, I, you know, now, where I'm at, I have really nothing bad to say about anyone because there's already enough bad, you know? So, uh, you know, I, I gotta say, you know, um, above the law was great for him. And, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, too bad he didn't find God. Right, right, so. right, right, right. Man, that's, that's uh, you know, it's, I feel like, I think this is, you know, and, and this is where I agree with you very much, you know, uh, it's the end time harvest and, you know, God has equipped us uh, as believers to to know how to maneuver the and outmaneuver the enemy, 
uh, to speak with wisdom and love, um, even when we get oppressed or we get the oppression from the enemy or from people who stand against the gospel. He yeah. gives us the, the wisdom and the courage and he enables us to stand for what's right and to preach and to, to get people and bring them to Christ. Um, I just really believe, like you said, we're in the, we're in the end times, but at the same and in, in the same breath, you know, we're gonna bring a lot of people to Christ, you know, mm -hmm. and we're just in that day and age. So there's there's still time, you know. Obviously, we're in the end, but there's still time for more people to come in, and that's what you're praying for. That's what I'm praying for. I think that's what the whole body of believers is praying for. Yeah, um, you know, I I just know that a lot of people. Like always tell me, hey, I gotta go to church. I'm like, no, not during these times. Right now, you're it's about the relationship, you know, because I started out as a Catholic. Right. So I used to pray to, you know, the Hail Marys, Full Grace, you know, and the, the rosary and all that. Then I realized, hey, the, the, look how good the devil is. He's such a great deceiver. He had us like praying to Mary and praying to statues and when when our, our relationship should just be directly with God and Jesus. Right. And then the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter, will, right. you know, come in. And so. Well, before, you know, we, we come to a close, I want to ask you these two questions. Um, what uh, was it like working with Jason Yee? I know you two fought each other. Um, I think, I believe I was watching an interview where he said you guys were already friends previously before you fought. What was it like sharing the ring with him and obviously knowing him and working on Dark Assassin with him? You know, um, Jason asked me to come, and this is where this is like my first real taste of really doing any movies, right? So right. I, I probably did really bad in that, but I, I didn't even like watch it. I was just too, at that time, I was focused on, on yeah. fighting. But then when I did watch it, I'm like, whoa, what I know now, what did I, man, look at that, was really bad, you know? And then, um, <laughs> um, but, you know, it, you live and learn and um um you know Jason was a great guy. I mean, um I I you know I I, I knew that you know he had a chip on his shoulder because he is the first one to you know get the bronze medal for the US team and then I came back, but then there's three other guys that or me and two other guys that got a bronze medal and mm -hmm. and then you know um you know he you know he, he you know it's just it's just we fought and you know um um you were on sure that you and then, um, yeah. you know, um, and and I just moved on to like, you know, just that next level. I I I I, I train too hard. I'm, yeah. I'm too physical. You know, I I just have a high output, and God bless me with so many great um, skills and reaction. And you know, I felt like yeah, I've been blessed. And like at that time when I was like, you know, in that stage where I want to fight in every tournament, I used to right. pay to go to tournaments. I fought <laughs> everywhere. And then, um, and, uh, you know, God, and I always gave glory to God. I was at that time, I carried around my rosary, you know, and, uh, now God's in my heart and, um, you know, and, um, and, uh, I, I love doing God's work because, uh, I know I feel and I hear, you know, it's, it's so right. spiritually connected with, you know, with the father. So are you two still friends? We, we haven't talked in such a long time, um, you know, um, but yeah, we're we're definitely not enemies. You know, right. unless he's an enemy of God, then right. everyone who's an enemy of God then is my enemy. You know, so. and um, I, I want to ask you about Scott Sheely. Um, I know you two uh, fought each other also twice, I believe. Um, he has, from what I remember in the past, been you two were very close. Um, he would help you prepare for a lot of your fights, and he was very instrumental. Um, later on in your fight career with helping you get a lot, you know, achieve a lot of great victories because of the training. Uh, what was it like fighting him and being his friend? Well, you know, when we fought each other, of course, we had that rival. And again, like everyone has a chip. Oh, yeah. Right. Maybe that I can, you know, take out Kong, you know, and right. and then um, it didn't happen, you know, and, and then he he's 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 truly uh, Scott is that country redneck, don't care. Ah, let's go. We're, come on, hit me harder. I said, okay, I'll hit you harder. You know, <laughs> he's, he's that guy in practice. Oh, he, like I hit him a good shot. He nods and he, and he comes in, tucks down, and he's like, wants to go toe to toe. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, and, and that, that made for an exciting fight. And um, 
So we we went out there, said, hey, um, shook each other's hands, says, good luck, and may the best man win. So And then later on, he came in. He had a lot of experience with Matt Brown, but I brought him in because he was very organized, and I needed someone to keep me on that. You know, because now, like at that time, I had, you know, uh, two kids and I, I just needed to stay focused in camp since I want to be around my kids and not take my camp, you know, somewhere else. And so um, I brought him in and he was very, uh, very, very good at breaking things down. We did. That's the first time I did a lot of tape sh a study, you know, right. and um, and then, um, you know, I, I think everything that um, we talked about, I, you know, I. I enjoyed, you know, the time that we got a chance to work with each other. And, you know, it's, uh, then, then, uh, you know, once the fight game's over, you know, we stay in touch a little bit. I brought him in a couple of my movies and, yeah. and, um, and, uh, you know, and, and the rest is history, you know? Right. Right. Last question. Um, I know that you are a, uh, I believe I saw on IMDB, you were producing two projects or uh, that's over with. You know, I still have the script. Um, okay. You know, we I, like I said, I was in the middle of everything, and I literally said, "Okay." When God came, I had the Robert Downey Jr. Uh, right. project, you know, to to send in, and um, then I had my own pr two projects, and I was, you know, talking to many investors and seeing which one I can work with best, and 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 it didn't happen because I chose a different path, and that path I had to leave behind because. I have to shed away this world in order to be able to be righteous enough to, to, you know, be with the father. Remember, I, I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not just looking to make it. I'm, I shoot for the highest. My wife and I were like, Hey, let's shoot. Let's go all in and try to get, you know, if, if someone, uh, you know, in the book could ask to sit at the table, you know, why don't we try to make that effort? And so when we do ask for that spot, it might be given to us, you know? So, you know, why not? That, that's the highest honor. I, I'm always looking because once you make it to heaven, yes, you won't have the devil and you won't have evilness around, but you still have to level up because you look at it, the, the Bible says that God has many mansions for his children. You know, I, I rather just go in and, you know, be able to sit at the table or work for from wherever I have to with my wife to, um, to you know, sit at the table because remember what the the Bible says: what's bound on here is bound in heaven. So right. we're we're all in, you know. Right, right. That's awesome. Listen, man, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, it is an absolute honor. Uh, you know, I'm a firm supporter in what you're doing. Keep going. Um, and I'm also hoping to meet you face to face in the future. We can train, we can spar. You could give me some tips. You know, I'm getting actually getting ready to fight in two weeks. Um, yeah, man, it's just an awesome. It's always great when when you can converse with another believer who's sold out and all in for Christ.